Hey Nancy Drew fans, we're back with book seven, The Clue in the Diary. Originally published in 1932 and revised in 1962, this is the second book published under the new Stratemeyer Syndicate, now run by Edward's daughters, Harriet and Edna. The entire series is published under the pseudonym of Carolyn Keene, but the books are incredibly popular at this point, and two things start happening. Journalists are now sniffing around to figure out who is writing the series, and Mildred Augustine, who we know has written the first seven books, is quoted in a Cleveland newspaper as saying she's the author. This really upsets Harriet and Edna, as does Mildred's refusal to accept a pay cut from her $125 original rate down to the Depression-era $100 that's offered. Despite the power struggles that are starting to happen, both sisters realize how much they need Mildred, and they do really work to keep a good relationship. The clue in the diary starts off a little shaky. Nancy was pretty in a distinctive way. Her eyes were blue, her hair blonde. She expressed her opinions firmly, but did not force them on others. Nancy's abilities of leadership were welcome and depended upon in any group. Further evidence of the sometimes clunky writing, or perhaps the lack of a good editor, in just three pages we have a total of 13 sentences ending in exclamation points, including this entire paragraph. Nancy, Bess, and George looked at one another horrified. The same thoughts raced through their minds. Mr. Swenson, an inventor. The Swedish diary Nancy had found at the scene of the fire. Mr. Raybolt's broken promises to inventors. But then the book gets going with a new development that shapes the rest of the series. Ned. Nancy, George, and Bess are leaving a carnival, and they happen to drive by a mansion when it explodes. Cinder is flying all around, and Ned, who happens to have the same busybody gene that Nancy herself possesses, takes it upon himself to move her convertible. Nancy first thinks that he's stealing her car, and she gives him the once-over, describing him this way. He was about 19, Nancy decided, surveying him critically. His hair was dark and slightly curly, his eyes whimsical and friendly. He wore a college fraternity pin. They officially meet on page 16. Ned is now directing traffic away from the fire, and so he's a witness when Nancy's in a car accident. He comes over to offer his services, which in this case include pulling the bumper off of her car with a strong, deft twist. He and Nancy share some conspiracies about how the fire was started, and they're both smitten. This leads to the outfits in this book. When Ned first comes calling, Nancy wears a floral dress and high heels. And then on their first date, she wears a pale green chiffon dress, gold evening shoes, and a white wrap. There's only one making fun of Bess moment in this book, and it happens when the girls are on a stakeout at the burned down mansion. The bugs have nearly eaten me up, Bess complained, and my back feels as though it were broken. You'll become paralyzed after another hour or so, Nancy grinned. We've seen boys admire Nancy in all the books so far, but now we get to see what it looks like when she returns their affections. He certainly intends to look after you, Nancy, Bess teased mischievously. Honestly, he has a terrible case. Hush, Nancy retorted, but she was not displeased. She's very level-headed with Ned, even at his cheesiest moments. She became conscious that Ned's eyes were looking straight at her. I will if I can fill most of the pages with entries of dates with you. Nancy evaded the question. I enjoyed your help in solving the mystery. Maybe we'll soon find another one we can work on together. This mystery, which involves arson and mail fraud and theft, is the least interesting part of the story, but I have to say it's really nice to have Nancy back in River Heights. I love having Hannah and her father in the story, and Ned's a fantastic addition. Next up, Nancy's Mysterious Letter.